Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over the Meraki client VPN settings. Uh, if you have a, if you have a Meraki MX firewall, you have the options of setting up a VPN using L2TP uh, with IPsec encryption. That option is free. You don't need any licenses for that. And uh, recently, and by recently, maybe a year or a year and a half ago, Meragi incorporated the use of AnyConnect for your uh, VPN configuration. But for that, you do need a license per user, but licenses are pretty cheap. Now, it's up to you whether you want to stay with IPsec or switch over to AnyConnect. Uh, IP6 is a headache. Uh, you know, it's reliable when it is reliable, and that is until Microsoft, if you use Microsoft, comes up with a brilliant idea of pushing out updates that are going to break the connections, and that happened before, but it hasn't happened since. So, but even then, um, L2TP, it's been around since forever over IPsec encryption, and it's a reliable way of connecting, and a reliable and secure way to connect to a VPN concentrator or a VPN server. But if you have the option, I would advise you to switch over and license your product to use any connect because it's going to be more powerful. It's going to be over SSL. It's going to be IPsec. It's going to be everything, and you're going to have more flexibilities. So let's do the uh, MX configuration. As you can see here, you would go to security and SD1, you go to client VPN, and this is the page that I'm at right now. And uh, since that is refreshing, so the first, the first thing that you would like to do, obviously, if that is disabled, you wanna enable this. So client VPN server, make sure that it is enabled. Then, uh, you don't have to do anything about the host name. You can change the host name if you want, actually. And you can use the host name. And this host name has been automatically assigned to this device by Meraki. But if you are hosting your own DNS zone, you can create a host name for your device and change it to that and point to that host name. Now, in this case, it is usually a best practice to set up the client connection to the host name instead of the IP address of the device. The reason for that is because the IP address of the device could change for whatever reason, or maybe you have a load balance, you have a high, av high availability system, and one of um, the primary device goes out of uh, production, and then the backup device goes into production with a different IP address. And then if you're connecting to the IP address, you're going to have problems. So that being said, uh, it is a best practice to use the DNS name and you can change this to anything you want or you can use your own. Now, the next option that you have to pay attention to and remember, these are the settings on the MX side. These are super simple settings. You have to create a subnet for the VPN connections and this subnet is going to be separate or it's going to be something different than your internal subnet. So make sure you use something that you're not using. And then you have to specify um, the mask for uh, the subnet. As you could see here, I'm using slash 24. This is my test environment, but depending on where you are deploying this configuration and the uh, security requirements for, for the setup that you're doing, you may want to limit the number of hosts available in your subnet. In this case, I'm using a slash 24. That's going to give me around 254 uh, usable IP address within that subnet. But in reality, I don't need that, right? So that's something to think about, right? Maybe you want to use slash 27 or something else, depending on how many devices are going to be connecting to your VPN uh, server. So you don't have that, you know, that open like that. It's just best practice. It's not a super layer of security. If you have it on 24 or 27, I mean, like you're going to be adding other layers of security. It's just better control of your environment. Now we come down to the DNS uh, servers. And as you could see, I'm using uh, use uh, 
Google public DNSs. So something you have to keep in mind here, if you want your clients, right, like these clients right here, to access internal resources, and those internal resources need to be located using uh, names, or then you want to specify your internal DNS servers in here, right? Uh, you know, if you're using a file server or if you're using something within your company, if you're using your computer, and then um, you want to use that VPN connection connection to access internal resources over uh, uh, host names, then you have to specify your DNS servers. In this case, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to use Google DNS. And then the same thing, if you are going to be using uh, NetBIOS uh, Discovery, or if you're going to be accessing resources over NetBIOS, you have to specify the IP addresses of the NetBIOS servers. And then uh, one of the last settings that you need to configure to enable the VPN server on Meraki, you have to specify the shared secret. Now, this is the secret that you are going to add to the client to every client configuration and we're going to go over that later okay so once you do that the the other option and this is the last option that i'm going to be talking about on this section is the authentication meaning this when a user is going to connect to your vpn server how you are going to authenticate that user in this case because i'm making my life si simpler and this is a test environment that I have, I'm using the Meraki authentication, meaning that the user accounts that users are going to type in um, to authenticate to the system is um, are going to be created on the Meraki cloud side. So you may ask, where do I create those users? I'm glad you asked because if you keep scrolling down, this is where you create the users, right? You can just like select add new user, add a description, whatever you want to add to it. Description. And then you enter the username. And the username is going to be the email address, and then you enter the password, whatever password you want to assign to this user. And then you click on this section on the drop down. And this authorization is if we want to authorize the user to access the uh, VPN uh, server. So you want to say yes to it, and the user. You know, you can select this option and an email is going to be sent to the user with the uh, username and password. And then if you want to have an expiration date for that user, you could do it right here. I would advise you another security best practice is to add an expiration date to this user of whatever you see applicable in your specific environment, right? Um the worst thing that could happen is that if you forget about it, that person is going to contact the help desk or is going to contact you saying, yay, I can't log in. And then you'll go there and re-enable it. But just, just don't leave um, unattended access, right? Like try to have some type of access control processes in place when doing this. So you do create user. And as you could see here, uh, this user, it says authorized for client VPN. It says yes. As you could see, you can also deauthorize the user, meaning revoking that access. Okay, so now that I have that, let me show you how to do this on or how to do the configuration on the client side. And in this case, I'm using Windows 10. And maybe I'll create videos for the other operating systems. As you could see here, it supports Windows, Android, Mac OS, and iOS. But on the Windows side, uh, since this is Windows 10, I'm going to do a VPN settings. And I'm going to add a VPN. And as you could see, the uh, VPN provider, I'm going to leave it as Windows built-in. 
and then the connection name, whatever name you want to, um, you know, make sense to use test connection. Let me just... And then the server IP address is the server of the MX, or you can also use the name. Remember that I was referring to this name uh, right here that you can use, or you could use the public IP address of the MX. And in my case, the public IP address of my MX is, let me uh, come here. And the public IP address is this. Is this is a dynamic IP address? So I'm gonna come down to my section. Oh, I can't uh, paste it. So let me type it in. Twenty four zero two one nine ten. And then I'm coming down here to VPN type. And as you can see, the default is automatic. You have to make sure that you select L2 TP IPsec with pre-shared key, which is that key that we saw before. Um, here, the share secret. And then we have to type in the key. Once you type in the key, you have the option of uh, typing in the username and password. Like as you could see here, you select username and password, and then you have the option of typing in the username and the password. So every time that you try to connect to it, you don't have to type in that information. So with that being said, I, I saved my settings. And as you could see here, I have a test connection. So I'm just going to click on connect. And as you could see, it's connecting and I'm going to be prompted to enter a username and password. And remember that information is from the users that I created before. Once you type in the information, you click on OK and the system is going to do its magic, blah, 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 blah. Okay, perfect. So as you could see, I got an error message that says the connection was terminated by the remote computer before it could be completed. So what's happening here is that my endpoint device, this computer is trying to connect to my VPN server, but there is a mismatch or configuration on the protocol side, on the encryption side. So I just wanted to show you this. So what you need to do is um, open up uh, uh, your network properties, and then you go to uh, change adapter settings, and then you find the uh, connection that you are connecting to. In this case, it's this test connection, as you could see, mini port L2TP. So I'm just gonna, right click on it, go to properties. Then you would go to the security tab of that menu and make sure that the data encryption option, as you could see the default is optional encryption. You know, like that's not a good thing, especially for VPNs. Uh, you wanna make sure that you set that up to require encryption and disconnect if server declines then you would go down to the allow these protocol sections and make sure that you use an encrypted password pop as the only option. So these are the settings you need to uh, implement to finalize your configuration if it doesn't work. So you click on okay. And now let's give this another try. I'm here, connect. Now, as you could see, I'm prompted to enter a username and password. And again, that is um, the information that I uh, assigned before. So I have that information and I click on OK. It says verifying your information. And as you can see, I am now connected 
to my network. So if you come here to control panel, you see that it is connected. You do status and you're going to see details and you're going to see one of the IP addresses from the subnet that you created previously. Now, that is how you set up an L2TP connection on the Meraki side and on the Windows client side. Again, L2TP is free. You don't need any licenses but I would advise you to uh, switch over or license your AnyConnect uh, connections because you're going to have more flexibility and it's going to be easier to manage and to deploy when you use AnyConnect uh, over L2TP. So if you liked this video, all I ask you for you is to click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and why don't you leave a nice comment there in the comments section? I would really appreciate that. If you have any questions, you can also leave the question in the comments section. And I try to answer that question as soon as I can. In the meantime, have a great day and I will talk to you on the next video.